Welcome everyone to today's Designing Dreams Careers in Interior Design event that we have for our CLL students today. And um, we have two wonderful panelists that are going to get us started. Um, but I am gonna turn it over. Um, Holly, I'm gonna make you the honorary um, moderator for right now. I'm gonna turn it over to you first to get the event rolling. Awesome, thanks Steph. So Carrie and Janet, we are so excited that you guys are here with us today. As Stephanie mentioned, this is gonna be recorded and it's gonna be such an instrumental thing to share with our school districts, with students that are interested in um, the design field. So just the flow of what we're gonna do is I'm going to um, have you guys introduce yourselves. I'm gonna just go Carrie, Janet, Carrie, Janet. So just so you guys know the order. Um, and then what we're gonna do is give you guys the opportunity to showcase um, what you're working on, any projects, your um, and then just kind of show it, share with any uh, other talents you have, where you went to school. Um, if you're self-employed, just go ahead and share all that and how you got to be where you're at. And then we will um, have questions along the way. I actually do have a list of questions as well that I'll go ahead and prompt you guys as well. And we will sometimes get student um, email chats along the way too, so I'll incorporate those questions. But I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so Carrie, why don't you just share a little bit about yourself, uh, maybe where you work, um, how you got into this industry, um, just a little bit about you. All right. Um, my name is Carrie Steinlogge. Um, I um, started off, I went to school for interior design at UNI. Um, and then I started working for a design builder in Cedar Falls where um, I really was introduced to the drafting side of design. Um, I worked for a design build construction company and um, did a lot of their drafting um, and then moved back home. Um, I grew up in the Kelmer area, so we moved back home um, and then opened up my, uh, my own business in the decor area. Um, and uh, started off as a home office and then um, our current location, we have a space downtown Decora. Um, we have a small retail space, and then we also offer um, drafting services. So we do new house plans, remodels, additions, kitchen design, and interior design. Um, and then we sell um, stone countertops and lighting, um, along with some home decor things. So um, we've been at our current location for just a year and a half, but Previous to that, I had an office location in Decor for about 11 years. Um, and um, yeah, so we stay super busy with COVID. It's been really busy. Um, a lot of people, um, because they can't travel, they're spending money on their homes. And, uh, and because we're spending so much time at home, uh, we've really seen a surge in new construction and remodels and additions. So, um, and uh, because we do the drafting side of it too, and the design, it keeps us busy with kind of both sides of that. So um, super fun job and every day is different. Every project's different um, and yeah. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Carrie. And it's nice just to see the, the many different facets that you, you touch. So thank you for sharing that part of it too. Janet, I'm gonna have you go next and just kind of answer the same question. Just tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you got to be where you're at. Sure. Um, my background is completely different. I went to Iowa State for business marketing and graduated with a bachelor's of science. Um, after college, I did go into marketing for about five years. Um, and then I started to have kids and decided to stay home um, decorating has always been a passion of mine. So I started staying home with my kids. I've always had a passion for design and decorating. I've always helped family and friends decorate. It's always just kind of been a side thing that I've always done. Um, I have four kids and my youngest is starting to go to school. So um, we decided that this would be a good time to start my decorating business. And I started right before COVID hit. And um, I have to agree with, um, that the business has just been booming. I do mostly refreshing of, of spaces, um, help decorate new homes um, style and also uh, stage. I do custom shopping and consulting as well. So 
um, just kind of a broad spectrum. Um, and it's just kind of something that I, I've always wanted to do and kind of fell into and um, it's really going somewhere. So. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that as well, Janet. And I think it is really important for the students that are listening to hear that too. Your pathway can change, right? And that's okay. So, and knowing Janet and her history, you know, with the marketing, that's a huge part with design too. Um, so I think those there's definitely that tie in there. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and jump into you guys showcasing um, your work, um, anything that you want to share, and then we'll jump into some questions. Carrie, I will have you go first with that. Um, do you want to share a screen, Carrie, or do you want us to do that for you? Yep, Carrie's sharing her screen. We tested it, so she'll be good to go. Awesome. All right, can you everybody see a floor plan? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I was just going to show the computer software that we use, which is Chief Architect. Um, so this is a new house that was recently built in Decora. Um, and this is kind of what we start off with when, um, you know, we meet with somebody and we're going to um, draw up their floor plan. We'll sit down with them and have a meeting. Um, and some of the things that we'll start with is, um, for instance, on your lot, where is your garage going to be located? And we'll kind of walk through garage placement and then we'll kind of walk through um, mudroom, um, living room placement, for instance, um, the living room, which I'm kind of circling is, um, do you want that to be out the back? Is there a certain view on your lot um, that we want to take advantage of? Um, same with the kitchen. Do you want that to be looking out the front of your home or out the back of your home? Um, so we'll walk through with clients kind of the placement of those things. And then we'll draw up a floor plan, um, which you can see here. Um, we have quite a nice library of different um, furniture items and um, accessory type things that we can put in our plans. Um, so we do Put a quite a bit of that um, detail in our plans and I'll just show you a little bit of the 3D. Um, so this is kind of a view if you're walking inside the front door of this home what you would see and it's really nice to give this visual to clients so they can see how their space is going to look before it's done. So for instance this new home wanted some large windows, built-in fireplace, um, you can see kind of a coffered ceiling in here or I should say beamed ceiling in the kitchen. Um, show quite, try to show as much as we can for details of appliances and wall tile. They wanted a brick wall in their kitchenette. Um, so we're showing that detail. And this also had an open loft space. Are you guys all seeing the 3D okay? Yeah. Yes, that's amazing. All right. Um, so I've been doing quite a few of the um, living room spaces that have that open loft and railing. Um, seems to be kind of a trend right now. Um, and then the mixing of materials, different woods and um, painted and non-painted finishes. Um, the barn door, you can see there's kind of a a barn door that has an open corner to the dining room here. Um, she wanted to be able to shut that off if she ever, um, as her kids were little, she had considered using this as kind of a toy room and being able to close that area off and then eventually becoming dining room. Let's see a little bit more detail on the ceiling here. into their master bedroom space. Master bedroom area. I'm sorry, this is just a guest bedroom. And then there's the bathroom. It's amazing the detail on everything that you're able to show them. Right, yeah. That's what's so nice about the computer software is just that detail. Um, so this was a two-story plan, and I'll go to the outside maybe first. 
um, this will show the outside of the house and then um, I can show the upstairs. But yeah, I think even for like when I do just interior design consultations, lots of times we end up doing a computer drawing too, just to give that visual for furniture layout, um, just seeing different accent colors. Sometimes, you know, we'll do a consultation and somebody wants to just change the outside of their house color, like they want to change the siding or put stone on their house or something. We'll still draw it up on the computer because it's just so helpful to see what it's going to look like before it's done. Um, so the computer has been um, a great asset. <laughs> I always think about um, designers, you know, 50 years ago and having to do all this by hand and drawing things by hand and I couldn't even imagine that but um, the software makes it fun and to be able to give a visual to the clients is super helpful. Um, I'm just going to go to show you the upstairs. So this was the main floor. Um, so they had just a, a guest bedroom that eventually could become a master bedroom. But right now they have all young kids and they wanted to be on the second floor. So I'm going to hit a button and this is the second floor of this home. So up here is where they have the master bedroom space and uh, and then they have the kids bedroom. So you can see one, two, three. Um, and then they did put a um, bonus area above the garage that has um, kind of closet space, exercise room and, and another bathroom. And then I'll just do a view up here. And this is that upstairs. Balcony space, and then again, this is that master bedroom, and the master bath. I'm going through some walls, and <laughs> I'm in the, the laundry room area, but here. Carrie, as you're going through this, what sort of educational training did you need? So um, I think some people are surprised by this, but for interior design, um, you do have to draw up a entire floor plan by hand and then on the computer. So a lot of this drafting things I learned in school um, and then even more so um, we use like an AutoCAD program in school. Um, and I think they just use that as a general program to start with. And then once I graduated from school or from college, then my first job, they used chief architect at the design build construction company. So that's where I really use, learned how to use this program. Um, but yeah, it, we do like in the interior design program, if, if if one of the students would go for that, you do learn a lot about like what's handicap accessible. We need three foot doorways. We need um, space for turning around a wheelchair if someone happened to be in a wheelchair or um, what's the standard bedroom size, um, you know, things like that. You kind of go through in school and then, you know, pick up a lot of that, you know, as you work um, in that field. But um, definitely, you know, learn the, the basics in um, school and then working for a construction company, especially I've learned more of the building um, materials and requirements and, and things like that. Um, and I really like the drafting side of it once I worked in that um, area after school and you know kind of decided to stick with that. And um, it is nice to have that background when we do interior design consultations because we can use that as a tool um, to show clients, okay, here's what it's going to look like. Here's your furniture arrangement. Um, so you can see what that looks like, um, you know, before that would be done, but. How um, often, is the, like, is it, is it frustrating or hard or how do you take when like you give this to a client and say, Hey, this is awesome. I think this is what you had in your head. 
And then they come mm -hmm. back and say, no, no, it wasn't. Like, you right. know, I mean, you, I mean, that would be some special communication skills and problem right. solving skills, correct? I mean, to me, that would be right. hard because you would see it like, oh, this yes. is awesome. And they'd be like, uh-uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, and that does, yep. And that does happen. And um, sometimes what I find out is, Part of it's communication. Um, part of it's the client maybe didn't know exactly what they wanted. And then once they saw, you know, thought they knew what they wanted and, and communicated that, but then once they saw it in real life, they're like, oh, that doesn't look like I kind of had in my head. So that visual thing, and, and most people have a hard time visualizing, you know, projects before they've done it, before they are done. And that's why this um, program is so nice because it can show you what it's going to look like. But um, I found the ones that um, don't like something that we did, it's probably because they had something else in their head and then it didn't look like what they thought it was going to look like. Um, and then, yeah, we just, and that's the beauty of the computer software. You know, once we have that preliminary plan or whatever, to make changes is, is not a big, um, big deal to do. So it's easy to change. Let's say they want the color of the house to be red instead of white. Well, it's a click of a button. So um, or if we want to take a porch off or something like that, it's um, a lot easier to do than if you were doing a hand drawing or something like they had to do back in the day. But um, definitely that can be challenging is, is getting that communication of what the customer wants and, and getting it on paper and then getting it in the computer. Because um, sometimes, like I said, the, the end result isn't kind of what they had pictured in their head. So. So Carrie, kind of tying off of that, because it sounds like that, you know, is one of one of the challenges that you're having, you know, to work through is just, you know, understanding the vision and, you know, making sure that communication piece and you're on the same page. Uh, what on the flip side, what's the most satisfying part of your job? Probably seeing the, the finished project, um, you know, and we don't always get to see that, but um, especially like remodels and additions, the before and afters are sometimes really um, amazing that it was able to transform that space the way it did. Um, and, and hearing clients say, oh my gosh, this is exactly how I wanted it. Or um, you, you went above and beyond with what we thought we could do with this space. Um, you know, just having the, the clients happy and then and seeing that before and after is always, um, yeah, fun to see the finished project, so. Awesome, thank you, Carrie. Yes. Terry, is there anything else you want to showcase before we flip to Janet? Um, I don't think so. I think I showed you most, um, yeah, Perfect. our uh, software and all of that. So I can't think of anything else. Awesome. And we'll have some additional questions for you afterwards towards the end here. So Janet, uh -huh. would you like me to share your Facebook page or is there something you would like to share on your end? No, you can go ahead and show that. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my share screen. And I'm gonna have you guys, staff, if you wanna give me a thumbs up to make sure you see Janet K. Home Styling. Um, awesome. So uh, Janet, I will um, just manipulate your screen if you just wanna yeah. tell me where to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I wanna reiterate, I am not an interior designer. I'm more of an interior decorator. So I do not do the drafting. I do not do all of that. I come in at the end and help pick out curtains, install curtains, pick out wall decor and whatnot. So I just want to reiterate that that, that is a huge difference um, in both of our fields. I'm not saying that I couldn't do the draft date. However, it's just that needs a whole different level of schooling. <laughs> um, and so Currently on my Facebook page, if you scroll down um, and go to my pictures, um, you can see kind of my before and afters of projects. So I typically come in um, sometimes during construction, sometimes outside of um, during construction or no construction at all. It's just maybe someone comes in and they say, hey, I want a new paint color. I don't know what color to paint. I need a new couch. I don't know what color of couch I want. Um, just anything like that. It can be from curtains to flooring um, and all in between. So I um, work a lot with clients. Um, I create vision boards for those individuals. 
And then um, we kind of discuss what they like, what they don't like. I typically walk around their current home to see what styles they tend to lean towards. Um, and then sometimes they just want something completely different. So it, communication is key. Um, learning how to keep a budget is also key. And um, working with someone else's money is always a tricky situation. So you need to definitely listen to your client. And um, ultimately, your client is going to be living in the home, not you. So if you don't specifically like something they choose, um, it's best just to be able to work with it and make it look the best that you can. So Janet, what would you say is the most challenging part um, when working with clients? Yeah, um, I think, you know, with so many things out there like HGTV, Pinterest, um, all the influencers out there, people like to, they have, they want something specific, but they don't know how to come across to it, or they think it might work in their room or in their space, and it very well might not, or they think they have like the most beautiful artwork, and they want a certain vibe, and that's not going to work, so you have to know how to read people and how to turn a negative into a positive. Um, so really communication and really the customer is always right. Because <laughs> again, it's their it's their their money, it's their space. Um, you know, and also it's okay to tell somebody I don't think that we're a right fit together. Um, you know, I've started a project or done a consult with an individual and you know, they were really pushing for something and I just didn't know how to make it work for them or, um, you know, some things just didn't mesh. And instead of just butting heads or, you know, getting in a sticky situation, it's okay just to kind of bow out sometimes and give a referral to someone else that might be able to help them. That's an excellent um point too, Janet. And I think you and Carrie both mentioned that it's communication, those soft mm -hmm. skills, right? Yeah. Um, being able to connect mm -hmm. with someone and, um, you know, as you guys are both making suggestions on things, putting it in a delicate way. So mm -hmm. you're not squashing their hopes and dreams either, but you guys are the experts in that area. You know, what looks good, you know, um, you know, color schemes, if it's a jewel tone or not, you guys are aware of that. Um, and, and that's why they hired you, right? You know, to kind of help with that, that expertise and aspect. Janet, with that, what would you say is the most fulfilling part of your job? I have to agree with Carrie. Um, just, you know, when a client walks into their space and they're just completely blown away by it and you can just tell that they love the room, they feel like at, at home. Ultimately, you want them to feel at home. You want to turn their house into a home. And when they, you can tell in the space, you know, they have this experience of, wow, I can believe you did this. And that just, that just makes everything worth it. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And then we'll kind of go through some additional questions too for you guys. Um, so you guys both kind of touched on your, your college experiences and um, your backgrounds, and I think that's huge to mention because right now there's going to be a lot of high school students that are going to watch this recording and they're going to be like, oh man, I see myself like Janet, or oh man, I see myself like Carrie, and that's fabulous because they're going to see that it's okay to explore, it's okay to try different things, it's okay to test out different classes because that's how we learn and grow. Um, I think you guys showcasing your individual work is huge. That's going to be just a selling point um, in which area. So Janet, I like how you pointed out, I'm, I do more of the home styling, the interior. You can have a super successful um, career in that business, in that line of work, but also, you know, you have the skills to sell yourself, right? Because you have the marketing background. Um, and then Carrie, you know, showing the different tools that you use, man, I got excited too. you know, listening to you both because it's really exciting to see what you have to offer. So I think we did cover the educational pieces of it. Um, Carrie, I'll have you start with this one. Was there one class in high school that you thought, man, I am never going to use this and then you actually <laughs> use it in your career? 
Yeah, um, I would probably say math because um, we do use a lot of math with drafting and measurements. Um, so when I go to a client's home and let's say they're doing a remodel or addition, I have to take measurements um, and then we have to you know, draw that out in a rough floor plan while I'm there. So we are measuring a lot of measuring um, and then even like um, calculating materials. So if for instance, um, they wanna do um, uh, or get a quote for a stone countertop, we have to measure that out. We have to draw that out. We have to calculate the inches and feet and, and all of that. Um, roof pitches, when we have to figure out roof pitches on a home. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of math and it's not like calculus or, you know, super hard math, but I think if you enjoy math is helpful um, as opposed to like, oh my gosh, I hate math. And, you know, it's just, it's going to be a, a challenge, but, um, but yes, a lot of math goes into our jobs. And that's one class that people might not think of, right? Um, mm -hmm. You've got to have that skill set for all the things that you, you mentioned. Janet, what right. about you? Was there any class in high school that you're like, I, I just don't think I'm going to use this? Um, well, I mean, even though I went in for a business major in college, um, I really thought I'd never use accounting. Um, and now owning my own business and doing invoices and budgeting other people's money along with paying myself, accounting is definitely huge, um, especially if you want to run your own business. But even if not, you still need to know how to budget when doing design work or decorating work, uh, because most people don't have an unlimited amount of money. <laughs> um, if they do, that's amazing. But still, you'll need to have a budget and know how to work with the budget and move money around. Um, and again, with Carrie said, measuring, you, you have to know how to use a ruler. You have to know, even if it's off, you know, by a fourth of an inch, it, it makes a big difference. So yeah, just simple math is huge. Awesome. What are your guys' thoughts? This was a, a student question that came in in advance. Is interior design also related to others like design like clothes or fashion? And if so, how do you guys feel like that relates? You want me to go first? <laughs> yes. Um, Okay. Um, yes, I do think it relates um, to a point. Um, you know, I think color trends, regardless if it's in clothes um, or in design, can be similar. And I know, um, you know, when they're picking the color of the year and, and all of that, um, I think that they're relating it to the fashion industry along with the design industry and all of that. But I think just even more so like the, the creative side of fashion and design are so similar. And, and so I think similar creative minded people are in both of those industries. And so I think they can overlap. And um, I know one of the um, classes that I had to take at UNI for interior design was called textiles. And it was all about learning the different um, types of fabric. So cotton and denim and suede and, and how, you know, those things hold up like wool carpet and the properties of all of those textiles. So um, definitely, I think there's a shared, a little bit of a shared um, part of design with fashion um, and how far that goes, you know, in one way or another is, um, is variable. But um, yes, I would say there is a, a shared relation there. Janet, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think to an extent, I feel like if you have a creative mind, um, a lot of things can carry over back and forth. Um, I think if you have it, you have it. And I would agree, like, as far as textiles go, you know, picking out um, the type of furniture that you want, you know, whether you want a suede or a bolstered or a leather, you know, that kind of stuff definitely goes hand in hand and knowing how to care for it and knowing if, you know, a person has four children and five dogs, you know, what fabric is going to work best in a well-used home. So I think they can go hand in hand for sure. Is there any classes um, that you maybe didn't take that you thought, wow, this would be really helpful for me in, in my career that I'm at right now? 
Um, I always tell kids um, that job shadow with me in high school, um, art classes are super important. Also some schools you can take CAD classes. Um, and I know some are through NACC that you can do online um, or on site. Um, but as far as the drafting side of it goes, it's just gonna be a leg up for interior design. Um, if you happen to go into interior design for school because you will have to have that drafting. Um, so that was something that was not available when I was in school, but I really wish it would have been. But um, yeah, so I think um, CAD drafting classes, art classes, math, and then um, Janet was right on the accounting side of it. Having my own business, I struggle with the bookkeeping and accounting. <laughs> And um, so, yes, definitely the, the marketing and, and accounting and, and business side of it um, definitely can be a big part of your career, so. Awesome, and then Janet, I'll hand it over to you for the same question. Yeah, I mean, I wish I would have taken a CAD class. Um, I wish I would have taken um, like maybe an entrepreneurial class if that was available at the time, it wasn't um, when I was in school. Um, but yeah, I mean, just if you want to own your own business, you have to know the business side of it. It's For me, it's the least fun <laughs> part of it, but it's also the most important part. Um, you know, so finance class, accounting class, um, and any sort of math class. Um, again, not the funnest part for most, but it is the most important part in the end of the day. And I think that's important to hear too. So it might be a class, um, you guys are both business owners. It might be a class that you're thinking, gosh, I have this design mindset, I wanna do this. But if you wanna be a business owner, it's thinking about those business marketing accounting classes that are gonna be helpful to sell yourself um, mm -hmm. and to, uh, to be able to obtain those clients. Right, also um, I would like to point out, um, also speech class, it's really important to know how to communicate with people um, you cannot be shy about it, especially if you're working one-on-one -on -one with clients face-to-face. -face. Um, not just working with the client, but you could also be working with their spouse. You could be working with their contractor, um, you know, their interior designer. So you have to know how to communicate well, precisely, and um, just know how to carry yourself. Very good point, Janet. Very good point. So I don't think I asked this right away, but what actually interested you both in your career paths? Um, why did you choose this? And it could be, you know, you know, Janet, you mentioned you started with one thing and switched. So when we get to we get to you, you can kind of explain that part of it too, a little bit more detail. But Carrie, I'll have you go first. Why did you choose this career? Um, actually, my dad brought it up um, when I was in middle school. He owned a flooring store, and so always had kind of had, I got a lot of my creativity side from, from him, I think. And um, he was an art major and in, in, in college and, and does a lot of pottery and stuff that I sell now in my store. But anyways, I always liked art like he did. And um, I think he saw a need for that. And, and maybe because I was constantly rearranging our living room furniture at home and my parents would come home from being gone for the day or something. And I would have the living room rearranged or you'd have, our bedrooms rearranged or something. Um, anyway, so he brought it up to me and I'm like, oh, what's an interior designer? I didn't know anything about it. And um, I remember being in middle school and we were just starting to figure out our careers and we were having to do like a poster board of what we wanted to do when we got older and um, taking those tests or whatever to, to see what your interests are. And um, the more I found out about it, the more I was like, oh, this sounds super fun. It sounds up my alley. I like art. I like those type of things. Um, and so then I just kind of, you know, started researching where I would go to school and um, things like that. And um, fortunately, it was something that uh, early on, I decided that would be something I would like to do and, and um, stuck it out. And, you know, after I graduated, um, always stayed in this line of work and um, did, you know, a couple different jobs in different areas. I sold kitchens um, for a while too. And, um, but yeah, I, Love it and um, never looked back, I guess. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Carrie. Janet, what about you? Why Janet <laughs> K-Home Styling? <laughs> uh, it, that's a great question. I, I'm, still, I'm still figuring it out, to be honest. 
Um, you know, I've, I've only been doing this professionally for a little over a year. So I'm still a very new business. Um, you know, to be honest, it's always something I thought other people just could do. I didn't realize that a lot of people couldn't visually see um, a change in a room or how a color would look in a room. Um, you know, when I would suggest something, someone would be like, oh, I just can't see that. And I didn't understand how they, how they couldn't see it. Um, so this has been something that my family has always been asking me to do for them. My close friends have always been asking me to do for them. Um, and so I guess in college, when I was trying to figure out my degree, I just, I chose marketing because I like the creative side of it, that sort of thing. Um, it, it, at that time, it felt like a good fit and um, kind of along the pathway I was going. You know, after college, when I was looking for a job, nothing really seemed to fit what I was looking for. So right out of college, after I got my degree, I knew that I wasn't gonna be in marketing forever. I also, after working for a couple different places, I also knew that I didn't wanna work for somebody. I knew I always wanted to have my own business. Um, I trying to figure out what that was. And um, once I became a stay-at-home mom, this was always the common denominator that kept popping up over and over and over again. Um, I would, you know, redo furniture for friends. I would go shopping for friends. I constantly am redoing our house and moving things around. And um, it honestly just took a couple other people to say, you need to do this. I would pay you for this. Um, why don't you just jump in and try it? And um, that's, that's kind of how it happened is um, I had a friend say, I want you to redo, I want you to decorate, um, you know, my, my full living room and my master bedroom. I'll pay you for it. And I said, you know, let me just start out. And if it works out, then I'm going to use you as my marketing ploy. <laughs> and then it just kind of spiraled from there. That's awesome. So it sounds like both of you guys have, have kind of had this in your not your back pocket, but something that you've always done in your life. Um, and so that's cool that you guys can be working in your passion too. And that's the other thing that we try to tell students is it's not all about that paycheck, right? You gotta love what you do. And we hear that from a lot of students, like their first question is, how much do I make? <laughs> <It's> like, well, <laughs> there's more to it than that. Yes, that's right. an important piece and your benefits or whatnot, but there is more to that. So, well, you guys, um, we're about out of time today. Um, I haven't seen any student questions come in, but I really appreciate your time. Um, and like I said, this was recorded, so we're going to share this out with students. 